In this video, traders, we're going to look at an example of buying a call option versus buying stock. Let's see the payoffs. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So let's have a look at the two different scenarios against buying stock and buying a call option. Let's see what the payoffs are, let's see how much it costs. Let's see the whole thing, look at disadvantages, advantages, that kind of stuff. Okay, so imagine we have company XYZ and it's trading at $50 at the moment. We also have a $50 call option, which is trading at $5. Now, for that ex this example, I'm gonna use an add the money call option. We, there are ways that we can maybe try and get a little bit clever with it by buying out of the money call options for a cheaper value. But let's just do this in a very simple example and just see what the payoffs are and how it would work. So our first scenario is we can buy one call at $5, which is gonna cost us 500 pounds because one option contract gives us the right to buy 100 shares of stock at that price, which is a 50 uh, call option, and it's cost us $5, so the total cost of that is 500. That's it, there's nothing more to pay. We put that in with our options broker, we pay our $500, that's it. It's not margin, it's nothing. That is just the total risk on the deal cannot lose more than that, whatever happens. This stock could go bankrupt the next day, that is your finite risk. So that is one of the major advantages of buying a call. You cannot lose more than your initial investment when you're purchasing a call option. The same when you're purchasing a put option. It's not the same when you're selling a put or selling a call, but for this example, when you're buying a call, that's it. No more risk than that. That's a very appealing thing. Okay, the other scenario is, number two, is you buy 100 shares of XYZ stock at 50 bucks and it costs you $5,000. Okay, now I know that you'll be able to trade that on margin potentially if you're depending on you've got the right account, depending if you're trading a CFD or spread bet or you've got a broker that allows you to trade margin. So you may not have to put that amount of money up, but generally speaking, you're going to have to do that if you want to hold it for a long period of time. You're going to have to put some money up and we want to talk about margin now because there's cost to carry all sorts. So assume if you went in and bought the actual stock and a traditional broker is gonna cost you $5,000. And that is your risk. You are risking the full 5,000. If that thing goes bust tomorrow, you've lost your full investment, right? So you can see we've got an advantage at the moment with the call, a disadvantage with buying the stock in terms of total risk. But let's look at some of the payoffs. So here we've got on this uh, axis here, this is the stock, uh, stock price at the expiry, and this is the P&L per share. So at expiry, this is what we're gonna look at it. Now, before expiry, our option may well be worth a lot more than this, depending on how quick it moves. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's just see, compare apples with apples and oranges with oranges, and look at the actual expiry, or, or let's say the time we want to sell the, the actual stock as well, which is equivalent to the expiry. So let's say the expiry is in January and January comes, let's look at where we are with our stock and where we are their option. So the stock is gonna be pretty self-explanatory, right? So the P&L or the dollar per share is literally going to be based on the value of the stock now versus the price that we paid for it. If we paid 50 bucks for it and it's now 50 bucks, our P&L is gonna be zero. If the stock price is now 100, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, then we are going to make $50 on the deal, right? We've doubled our money, made $50, cost us 50, all good. Pretty self-explanatory. If we go the other way, you know, if the stock price goes down to zero, we're gonna lose our full $50 per share, our total $5,000, uh, and anywhere in between. You know, we, we don't have to go every single level, you get that, right? Now let's look at the scenario where we're buying a call. Now, if we're buying a call, we've paid $5 for it. Okay, so we have to forget, we, don't have to, we, we must remember, or don't forget, that the price of that insurance, which is, well not insurance, but the price of that call, which is the, the kind of deal that we've done, the price of the option contract is $5. So we have to allow for that with the price of the stock at expiry. So if the stock expires at, the stock is $50 at expiry, the call is worthless, right? Because we've got the right to buy 100 shares at $50, there's no value to that, right? Because the underlying is worth 50. So we've lost the price we paid for that call option, which is $5, which is $500, because we bought one call option, which is 100 shares. 
So let's say it went to 100. Okay, let's keep it easy for now. Let's say it went to $60. I don't need to go crazy. This is a real, real world example. That's not unheard of, but let's use $60, right? So $60 in the stock example, we have got 100 shares. We've made $10. That's great, right? We've made $1,000 on that because we've got made $10 per share. We've got 100 shares with 1,000 bucks. That's fantastic because $6,000 is what our uh, value of our share stock is now. Take off our cost. We made 1,000. Now let's look at the put off. Option. The put option again, $60, it's worth $10, but let's not forget we actually paid $5 for it. So, what's our profit in this scenario? Our profit in this scenario, if it's $60, is equal to our call option we bought at $5, it's now worth $10, it's worth $1,000, we've paid $500, but we've made $500 from that which is good because we've actually doubled our money because we only put up $500 worth of risk as opposed to $5,000 worth of risk and a thousand here. Okay, that seems quite good. So you can see that basically we shift our break even with when we have a call option just a little bit more. So that's the price we kind of pay for having the flip side, which we'll look at now, which is what happens when the stock goes lower. So when the stock goes lower, Whatever happens with the call option, if the stock goes lower than 50 bucks, we're not going to lose any more than the price we've paid for this call. This is why we have the offset of, hey, the break even now becomes $55 for this. Because as the price goes lower and lower and lower, it doesn't matter. The value of the call is still zero, whether that price is 40 or zero, the stock price. So we've just lost 500 bucks. That's the way it is. Okay, now let's look at the stock. Obviously, now we've got open ended risk all the way down to the stock price being zero could have a catastrophic loss of 5,000. Right, so that seems quite good. That's like a positive for the call option, right? But let's look at some disadvantages. So some disadvantages might be this. You might uh, add expiry Let's say the price is still sitting at 50 bucks at expiry. That call option expires worthless. That's still got $5,000 worth of value. You've lost nothing, your stock. If you're holding your stock, and then let's say the next day it suddenly rips up. If you're holding the call and it's past expiry, sorry, it's expired worthless. But your stock is still got value. There's still value there. The value of this call option will decay over time, assuming all other variables remain constant, purely because as the time gets narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower, that'll be worth less and 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 less. Okay, and so in reality, you've got to have the timing right. If you're very specific with the time period, then yeah, you kind of offset that for the insurance that you get from not having it go to zero or not having the stock completely annihilated and you losing the full $5,000, but you've got to have the time period right. Now, the, the trap that we can fall into is we can say, oh, well, actually um, that expiry, if I go a little bit earlier, maybe the call option is only three bucks, but it's that price that for a reason, because the, the shorter amount of time that something's got to do something, the less likely it is, the cheaper the option is for you. Whereas if you go really, really wide and expire, it starts becoming more expensive. So there's a payoff either way. As, as, as always, guys, in the markets, there's always that payoff either way. So another downside, of course, of the call is that, um, you know, when you are, the market could suddenly drop down heavily and that call becomes worthless, and then the market could pick back up. So maybe it expires when it's down here. You, call, you lose your $500, and the next week it puts push back up to break even. With the stock example, you're still in it. So there's a real time component here with the call option that there isn't with the stock, and that's the payoff you've got to decide. Now, one other scenario to talk about is that if the stock price suddenly rips up in, uh, into the stratosphere, then this call option is gonna be very valuable very, very quickly because you've still got that time period and you've got some intrinsic value in it as well. So you might have opportunities to make some more money from that. So anyway, that's looking at buying a call option versus buying the stock, the difference in price, the difference in total risk, the difference in required capital, and the difference in the outcomes of your PL. See you next one, guys. Bye bye.